Now, after a month of speculation about his disappearance from public view, China has removed its newly appointed foreign minister, Qing Gang, and replaced him with his predecessor, Wang Yi. As a close associate of President Xi Jinping, Mr. Chen was promoted rather quickly, but his removal without an official explanation continues to fuel speculations over what happened. Our China correspondent Stephen McDonnell is following the story in Beijing. This is, of course, absolutely massive news in China, and yet in typical fashion, it came in such a muted way, with just a few sentences read out on the evening television news bulletin that the foreign minister, Qing Gang, was to be removed from his post and replaced by the Communist Party's senior foreign affairs official, Wang Yi, someone who's done the job before. For the Chinese people, that's all they get, and I suppose it's just for them to accept it. That's the idea. The government's made a decision. That's your foreign minister. He's gone. No more explanation why. The interesting thing, though, is how somebody who was seen as being so close to Xi Jinping, who was appointed by Xi Jinping only half a year ago, can have so quickly been removed from this post. And because of the opaque nature of governance here, all manner of questions are being asked about this. I mean, he disappeared and sort of what wasn't fronting up for his normal duties about a month ago. And the official explanation was, oh, it's because of health reasons. But as the weeks went on and he wasn't reappearing, well, people started speculating, maybe this is some sort of political punishment for him. And then online, the rumours started spreading about him having had an affair with a television presenter and that she also had disappeared. Now, of course, it could be a combination of those two things as well. For example, his enemies in the party could be using an affair like this, an extramarital affair, to get him. Because although this is not against the law in China, it could be construed to be against internal party discipline regulations. And so maybe someone who has a different view of him, maybe someone who thinks he's not wolf warrior enough, not going out there hard enough, maybe it's just rivalry, who knows, and that they've used this affair to get him. Either way, here we are, still guessing with no further information, and even if it is something to do with his health, none of these options are good. You know, it, it, either way, this, you know, it looks like we may never see Ching Gang in public life again. And if you look at the Foreign Ministry's website, his name is already being scrubbed from the records. That was our Beijing correspondent, Stephen McDonnell. Well, earlier, I also spoke to Ian Johnson, a senior fellow on China studies at the Council on Foreign Relations, and he told me more about all the rumours surrounding his removal from his post. I think it's almost in some ways, I guess it's not so important, the um, sort of reasons. It's more... Clearly, he ran into some political difficulty. I think if you if you just got ill, then there would have been a, a, a forthright explanation of that. Instead, there was a very terse one sentence statement saying that he'd been removed from office. Um, the extramarital affair, I could believe it could be true, of course, but. I would think that security officials would have known about this for a long time. I don't think at that level in Chinese politics that there are too many secrets. So I think there must have been some other trigger that happened in the past couple of months that caused him to fall out of favor. And I think that's really the interesting thing. Mm. And he's been replaced by Wang Yi, who's kind of retired, uh, who's returning from his semi-retirement. Again, a lot of rumours about how the two men may not have got on. But is this about political infighting, which could show their problems at the top with how China runs things? Yeah, I think it's um, it's possible that they didn't get along or that the knives were out for Ching Gong because he had been promoted very quickly. Um, he was relatively young for his position and had wasn't exactly helicoptered up to the highest levels, but he, it was a pretty fast rise. Clearly, he was Xi Jinping's person. I think it you know the, the bigger issue to me is that it's another one of a string of very public. 
um, problems that Xi Jinping has faced over the past 12 months. And the first decade or so that he was in power, from his perspective at least, uh, things went very, very smoothly. But like leaders, many leaders around the world, after you've been in power for a while, problems seem to accumulate. And these are problems that aren't sort of behind the scenes. These are very public things, such as the COVID, uh, the handling of the ending of the COVID restrictions and, and Qinggong and the economy. Um, these are things that I think all Chinese people can see and and and, uh, and and understand that there's something going on. How long do you think Wang Yi will be in this position? Will they possibly be appointing another foreign minister? I would think they they will appoint another foreign minister. Uh, Wang Yi has held the position before. He's clearly a fireman or a caretaker who's been sent in to right the ship to keep Chinese foreign policy going smoothly. And I think he'll do that because he's very a very capable official. I would imagine perhaps by next spring at the National People's Congress, that usually takes place in early March, there'll probably be a new foreign minister uh, that will give them time to vet everyone, perhaps a little more carefully, to go through normal, normal procedures and get somebody else in charge, and that will allow Wang Yi to go back to his more senior position that he had held in the Communist Party coordinating foreign policy.